Hi guys and welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In this week's video, we're returning to Power Query and we're going to look at a very simple example of how you can use it as an alternative to something like XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP if you're still using it. Now, if you'd like to know a little bit more about either XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP, I've got loads of videos on my channel about these. I'll link to a couple of them in the description below. You'll also find a link to the file I'm using here if you'd like to follow along. But for now, let's jump right in. In this example, I've got a very simple table with a wine list and I've got a wine order. And I'm going to just remind you of the VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP way to pull in my type and my price per bottle. So if I want to look at the wine type using VLOOKUP, we'll type it in equals VLOOKUP, select my lookup value, then the table I want to look it up in, it is column two because type is the second column and I want an exact match. And if we hit enter, you'll see it auto fills down because I've got this set up in a table format. Now looking at XLOOKUP for my price, we'll go equals XLOOKUP. Again, I want the value. We're looking it up in this first column and we're looking at the price in this third column, hit enter. And again, it fills down. And you can see in this example how easy XLOOKUP is to use. Now this is fine for small tables like this, but if you start getting really, really large data sets and you've got your formula copying down, you potentially start running the risk of errors creeping in or people overwriting your formulas. If you've got thousands and thousands of rows, this can also make your workbooks very, very large. So a second way of doing this is to use Power Query. So if we've got the same data here on a second tab, we've got our wine list and we've simply got our wine order with what wine somebody wants to order and the number of bottles. And we're going to pull both these tables into Power Query. So they are both set up as tables. This one's called wine list and this one's called wine order. I'm going to pull them both into Power Query and use it to do that XLOOKUP for us. So to do this, we come to our data tab, go to get data. I'm going to select a blank query and I'm going to simply pull in all the tables in my workbook. I've shown you how to do this in a previous video, but for those of you who maybe haven't watched some of my previous Power Query videos, if you type in equals Excel dot current workbook with the capital E, C and W, and then open and close a bracket, and click my little tick, it will pull in all the tables in my workbook. So I'm going to just duplicate this query. In this first one, I'm going to open the wine list table. So I will call this one list. And for the second one, I'm going to open the wine order table. And I'll just call this one order. Now this order one is where I want to then combine in the additional details from my list. And to do this, I'm going to go to merge queries. I'm going to select that list and I'm going to join them by these name columns. If I click OK and expand it out, I'm going to uncheck this use original column name as prefix and click OK. You'll see it's now expanded all those out. I do have a duplicate for name, so I'm going to click this column and remove it. But you can see it's given me the type and the price per bottle. What I want now is for it to multiply the number of bottles by the price per bottle. So to do this, I would come to add column, create a custom column, and I would simply click on number of bottles, use my asterisk for multiply, and multiply by my price per bottle. I'm going to call this total price. And if I click on OK, you can see that has gone in at the end. Now, all I need to do is click on close and load. So if I go close and load two, and it's got a whole different range of options. I can insert as a table, as a pivot table report, pivot chart, and we can select where we want it. I'm going to put it into a new worksheet and click OK. And you can see I've got my table in now. I'm going to format these two columns as currency. And I'm going to then add a total row. And I'll also sum up this one. Now it's quite simple. If I were to come back to my Wine Order 2 tab, to add an additional wine at the bottom, so I'll just copy this one for now. We'll call it white and we'll say it's $8.99 and we'll call that wine 11. And then if I were to add in a few additional wines that someone is purchasing, what I would then need to do is come to my data, click refresh all. You'll see that it's added in that wine 2 and wine 11, but maintaining that original formatting. Now I might want to update my query. 
So in this example, I might want to say sort it by the name. I can come back over to my query and double click on it to reopen my Power Query editor and say I want to sort this ascending. Then when I hit close and load, you'll see that it's updated in that way. So this is an extremely simple example of how you can use Power Query as an alternative to something like VLOOKUP. But one of the benefits is whenever you add new data to your original lists and click refresh, it will automatically update your output table. It can also help reduce the risk of errors. I'd love to know what you think, whether this is a technique that you use or think that you might use. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on what other topics around Power Query you might like to learn more about or other suggestions for future videos. As always, please do give this video a thumbs up as it really helps me out as a content creator. And if you've not done so already, please do hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.